Hello everybody, welcome to another video on Python for linguists. Um, as always with these videos, uh, please be ready to code along and think along. There'll be code examples, there'll be little exercises um, and you, you'll get a chance to actually hone your own skills. And this one is about user input. So it's the second of two videos that uh, engage the topic of um, of, of including uh, options that the user can choose um, to make the script a bit more flexible, to search for particular words, um, to decide which, uh, which, which directories to process, etc. And um, we've encountered command line arguments uh, which are helpful, particularly if um, the script is pretty strict, pretty linear, linear um, about um, what it's supposed to do. If it's always about finding a word, then um, command line argument is probably the way to go because you can execute everything the script needs to know or feed it everything it needs to know at execution, step away from the keyboard, uh, let, it do it, let it do its thing. Um, it gets more difficult if the script sort of goes down a decision tree and maybe requires different kinds of information depending on uh, what happens in the script or if there's just a lot um, of decisions to make that get tedious maybe um, to write as a list of 15 command line arguments, uh, for example. And um, a good alternative for these cases is incorporating that during uh, execution to basically pause the script really quickly during execution and ask the, the user um, to supply some kind of input that tells the script where or how to continue. Um, from a user's perspective, you all know this. This is how you interact with programs in general, uh, with websites, etc. Right? Um, you sort of you do something, and then depending on what you do, something else happens, and it sort of keeps um, going back and forth like this. Uh, so this is the kind of uh, the kind of procedure that we'll look into implementing here. Um, and all we need is this here, right? Uh, we have a line of code that says name equals. So we just have a variable name here. Input which is a function and takes the argument or well, a string as an argument here. Hello, what is your name? Um, what's going on here? Name is just a variable name. Whenever we see a string followed by a single equal sign, we know that's that's just a variable, an arbitrary name being assigned a value. So what is that value? The value is the return of the input function. So we call the input function um, and that input function basically asks the user to type something um, on their keyboard and then hit enter. And whatever they typed as a string in the way they typed it um, will be will be the return of input. So that's what's stored under name. Um, and the little uh, argument that you give input is simply um, that, that simply gets printed to the user so they know what to do, right? So here you can give the user, user guidance, um, like asking them, what's your name? You can also specify the kinds of things that they can respond with um, so to help them help them along uh, and make sure the code doesn't crash. Um, so that's that's all it takes, right? Um, as with command line argument arguments, um, user input only really makes sense uh, if you execute a script and then the script sort of asks the user who's not currently working in the script uh, to pri provide information. Um, so this is not something you do in the shell this is really sort of reserved for for writing scripts um, and this is all you need to know for for writing a basic chatbot so we'll start with an exercise right away let's let's do that write a mini chatbot that asks the user their name greets them with that particular name um, and also asks them how old they are and responds uh, by giving them legal advice about whether they can or can't drink yet um, you need to execute the script from the command line to see if it works. And um, you can already start thinking about whether the way you're going to write this at some point um, will run into problems. Uh, obviously, scroll down for a solution. Uh, I'll quickly just show you what it looks like when, when this is executed. So what to expect here. Um, Python, this is the, this one here. Right, um, and it says, hello, what is your name? Let's tell it. And then it says, hi, Axel, right? So it, 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 it has a level of awareness that it's being spoken to. It's nice to meet you. How old are you? This is my age of the, at the time of recording. Congratulations, you're allowed to purchase and consume alcoholic beverages. Please 
drink responsibly though. There should be a, a full stop behind beverages, but that's um, a linguistic oversight and nothing that breaks the code. All right, um, so figure out how to do that. And uh, if you get stuck, there's, there's a solution um, scrolling down in the, in the slides here. Uh, slides are always linked in the video description and at the end of the video as well. One thing I already foreshadowed here is the possibility of dealing with faulty user input. Um, <clears throat> input takes any string, anything, any sequence of keystrokes that the user decides on, hits enter, is just read as a string and that's what's what it returns, right? Um, and very often we don't want just anything, we want a, a more limited range of options, maybe something that is in fact a file, a directory, a valid directory um, on the computer, or just simply yes or no, or, um, you know, a list of, of uh, four different parameters that you could feed to a function, etc. Uh, so we want a level of control and we don't want the user to, to simply break the code by doing something stupid. Um, in a small script, probably breaking it is no biggie, then you just restart it, but sometimes maybe the script has already done a lot of work, uh, worked for hours, and now there's the user accidentally hits the wrong, gives the wrong input and then something breaks. That would be highly annoying. Um, so for this, I actually introduce another um, data, another command type in Python, uh, and those are while loops. So let me walk you just through the script here. Uh, we start with what we've just encountered right now. Joke is, um, and then input and just sort of a question, hit Y or N. And then sort of the expectation that's humanly understandable here is that the user, user hit Y or N and enter. But we don't have anything, any way to force the user to do that here. Um, so the first thing we can do is, is, is put in lines two to four as an accountability measure. So we're saying while not joke in YN. So basically while what we have stored under joke is not either Y or N. Um, slightly problematic because it still could be yn then that's also in yn um, so maybe it will be more accountable to say while not um, joke equals a while joke not equals y and joke not equals n that will be the the more explicit and accountable way but anyway that's um, that's a side note so while this condition obtains here as long as this is evaluated to true so as long as joke is not y or n we just tell the we inform the user sorry can't deal with that give me a y or an n and then we overwrite what's in joke with a new input statement here just say please try again and then the user user has options right they can hit y they can hit n or do something else if they hit y or n then this condition is no longer satisfied no longer evaluates to true and then we exit the the while loop so we're out of this and we move on but if again it's Peter instead of Y or N, this condition still obtains and the while loop executes over again. Um, so this is what a while loop does not, like where a for loop does something for ele every element in an iterable, in any sequence, um, a, a while loop um, does whatever the block, the indented block of code is while a certain condition obtains. Um, and this is really useful here because we can uh, grab the user and not let them go until they've given us a Y or an N. And then the rest of the script is is just standard stuff that we, we know, right? If joke is Y, um, you, you tell them a joke and we use another sort of chatty, chat body input, uh, print input sequence here. And if not, we just t tell them, well, um, your loss. Uh, we can quickly look at what this looks like as well. Um, so this is just called joke. .py. Should I tell you a joke? Hit Y or N. Let's say we're not stupid, but maybe we did accidentally, we did uppercase Y and the script doesn't lowercase our option. That will be another, another um, safety measure, but it doesn't. So it now says, sorry, can only take Y or N as an answer. Then I hit Peter and then it still isn't pleased. And then I hit yes. And it says, what do you call a dog magician? Hit any key to continue. Let's do that. So you can think about it a little. It doesn't immediately display the answer. A labracadabrador. Um, 
maybe this last bit is worth uh, talking about a little bit more. We have this input statement here, hit any key to continue. And it's an input statement whose return value, whatever the user hits, um, doesn't go anywhere. So this evaporates. The only function this has is it pauses the script. And only when the user does something, we don't care what they do, um, does the script continue. So here it's not about getting input from the user, but giving them a level of control of how fast things go, which makes sense in a, um, a rhetorical question, a joke where maybe you want to think about it for a second. Pretty cool, right? Um, you can write pretty, pretty fun stuff with that already. Um, we talked about the while loop uh, in, in the applied context of the example. Um, I want to, to just include a slide that, that gives another overview of the structure. It's very similar to a for loop, right? The for loop executes the same series of commands applied to all elements in an iterable, which is just sort of any, um, any data structure that has multiple elements um, that aren't, aren't further hierarchically ordered or something. And a while loop keeps executing the code over and over and over again uh, until the conditioning uh, condition following the while evaluates to false. Um, and this can be useful for a number of things. Um, here we just saw forcing the user to provide the right kind of input and remaining in the while loop while the input isn't yet right. Um, it can also be used to flexi flexibly process grammatical patterns. I've recently started using while loops more and more, um, where basically we know that um, if we have if we have a um, an article, so in English a a a an or the, um, we're going to have a noun phrase um, where somewhere there's going to be a noun, but there might be uh, adjectives. So maybe I'm interested in adjective sequences. Um, uh, modifying, pre-modifying uh, the head noun in a noun phrase. And that could be one or adjective or more, right? So I can basically decide, okay, I'm encountering an article now. And while um, I have not yet found uh, the, the noun that follows it, I keep looking for the things in between. So I can sort of have flexibility in how, how large um, the pre-modifying part of the noun phrase is. Um, if that sounds a bit of bit, bit too abstract, don't worry about that. Um, while loops take a while, haha, uh, to 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 get behind or to understand. And um, the, the best thing to do is to see them in practice. And I think these these user input contexts are quite useful because they show a very um, logically, intuitively uh, plausible way of interacting with them. Um, that really concludes the input. I did want to leave you with, with a little bit of extra practice. And that's just returning to your little mini chatbot script um, that deals with a potential issue in it, right? So you ask the user their name and uh, their, their age, sorry. And um, you, you immediately think they're gonna say something like 19 or 25 or something like that. Um, and then to check whether they're of legal drinking age, you actually need to, uh, you need to treat uh, the age as an integer because you're going to have to sort of compare it to whatever the integer value of the legal drinking age is and you can't do that if they don't provide something that can be turned into an integer um, so here is 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 a chance to practice using while loops um, so modify your script that you uh, wrote in response to the first exercise in such a way that it's robust against um, troublesome user input when when being asked for their age um, again, you can scroll down for the solution. Uh, that'll conclude the, uh, this particular lecture. Um, this is still bare bones coding, but I think it's uh, a structure is starting to build and we're really starting to get to the point where we can do quite exciting things with coding. Um, so I'm personally, personally uh, excited uh, at this point in the semester because we were in the sequence of, of videos because we're really um, starting uh, to be able to do quite a quite a lot of things, um, and uh, it only gets more powerful from here on. These are the the image credits uh, for the present video, and um, of course here is the link to the slides, the QR code. Again, in the video description, might be the easiest to just click on the link there. Um, once YouTube makes it clickable, um, they don't trust me enough yet, but I'm sure they will at some point. Uh, thanks for tuning in, and see you for the next video.